Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In this video we are going to review this ePaper e-ink display module for the Raspberry Pi Pico which is 400 by 300 pixels from Waveshare. The display comes with many features, no backlight, ultra low power consumption, SPI interface which requires minimal IO pins, onboard voltage regulator so it is compatible with 3.3 or 5 volt microcontrollers and two user buttons for easy interfacing. Now the code provided for this is not very simple and the demo is a little bit limited. I will show you the demo now of the code that was provided but I have made my own custom script to make it easier to display images like this. So let's first look at the demo code and then let's look at how can you go and display an image and make a custom badge. You can either download the demo code from the website here or you can also go to my own personal website where I have the code. So when you open the code that is provided, you will have these three folders, Python, Nano, um, GUI, you will have Python and then you will have the C code. Now if we open Python, we can see here the different versions. So we have the 4.2 inch, but we have four different files. Now if you open this one, which I assumed will be for black, and let's just open this, you will see everything is already set up for you here. And then this is the library, and then here at the end, you have the demo code. So here we have our main program and this is what's going to run. So what I have done is I've separated this as a library on its own so that we can just make a new script and then use it as a library. But first let's run this code on the Pico and see what happens. So when we run the code we will see it displays Waveshare, Pico ePaper and Raspberry Pi Pico at the given coordinates from the code. And then the screen will refresh and create an intersecting pattern. This will then make a black rectangle at a certain coordinate and again fill it in with black. Then it will count from one to nine and after that it will then turn white again and be in sleep mode. And then it will display the four different grayscales with different types of background using a white background or a black background. And then after this, the demo will then be finished. Now the only thing I did not like about this, it didn't show you how to display a picture and this is shown on the website. Now there is code in C on how to display a picture, but that is much more difficult to figure out, especially if you're new to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'm going to show you how to display a picture using MicroPython with the Raspberry Pi Pico. On my website, click on the image display library and then click this link to download the code. Once you have extracted the zip file, you will have the following three files. So let's just press shift and select all of them and upload this to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Once it is uploaded, let's open the e-ink demo and we see here we import this logo from here, which is just a YouTube logo, but in this case it is the Pikachu one. So let's just run this. And then we'll talk about how can we use any other image. So let's go through the process on how to create a new image. So we are going to use Inkscape and we're going to click on file and we're going to go to document properties. And we want to make sure the width here is set to pixels and we're going to have 400 by 300. Okay, now we can close this. So this is the canvas size of our screen. Now I have downloaded this logo here. So I'm gonna drag and drop this YouTube logo inside. And I'm just gonna hit OK. And I'm just gonna drag this a little bit bigger so we can cover most of the screen. Something like this. Now I'm gonna click on File and I'm gonna click on Export. And then here for the background, I'm just going to make this all white and we see our width and height is still correct and we're going to export this as a PNG and here we can click where we want to export this and then let's just give it a name I'm going to say YouTube logo update and we need to make sure it is a PNG and click on save now here is my new YouTube logo that has been updated and then we want to go to this website called image to cpp and I'm going to hit choose file and I'm going to go open the YouTube logo update. 
Now here we see our canvas size is 400 by 300. We're going to leave the background white and we'll leave everything here on default. If you want to go change the dithering or brightness, you can go change these values. So here we have our YouTube logo, a demo of it. And here for a code output, we're going to change this to plain bytes and leave it horizontal one bit per pixel. Then we're going to click generate code. Now we want to copy everything here and then go back to Fonny and open our logo. And then here, we're just going to select everything here and then replace it with what we just copied. And I'm going to click save. And now I can go run my demo again. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I will see you in the next video.